In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies of your the healing remedies your kindness bestows through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In a vision, I, Daniel, saw during the night the four winds of heaven stirred up the great sea, from which emerged four immense beasts, each different from the others. The first was like a lion, but with eagle's wings. While I watched, the wings were plucked, it was raised, from the ground to stand on two feet like a man and given a human mind. The second was like a bear. It was raised up on one side and among the teeth in its mouth were three tusks. It was given the order up, devour much flesh. After this, I looked and saw another beast like a leopard. On its back were four wings like those of a bird, and it had four heads. To this beast, dominion was given. After this, in the visions of the night, I saw the fourth beast, different from all the others, terrifying, horrible, and of extraordinary strength. It had great iron teeth, with which it devoured and crushed, and what was left it trampled with its feet. I was considering the ten horns it had, when suddenly another, a little horn, sprang up out of their midst, and three of the previous horns were torn away to make room for it. This horn had eyes like a man, and a mouth that spoke arrogantly. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was snow bright, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, and with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat, Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. I watched then for the first of the arrogant words which the horn spoke, until the beast was slain, and its body thrown into the fire to be burnt up. The other beasts, which also lost their dominion, 
were granted the prolongation of life for a time and a season. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, he received dominion, glory, and kingship. Nations and peoples of every language serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Mountains and hills bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Everything growing from the earth bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. You springs, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Seas and rivers, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Glory and eternal praise to him. You dolphins and all water creatures, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Glory and eternal praise to him. All you birds of the air, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. All you beasts, wild and tame, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Consider the fig tree and all the other trees. When their buds burst open, you see for yourselves and know that summer is now near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away. The Gospel of the Lord. I think in a homily once I mentioned something about liking uh, to go to movies to be scared. Not, uh, and I discovered that there is a different, I think I mentioned something about horror movies and um, I understand that there are really two different genres that are going on. There's horror movies and there's terror movies, okay? So I, so I, I go towards the terror movies, I would say, the Alfred Hitchcock, things like that. Um, and, uh, but they were quite scandalized that I, was, that I would be wanting, uh, that I would be interested in something like that something like that. But there is, there is something about being scared when you know it's not real, because it doesn't really scare you then. It's, it's, it's uh, an entertaining thing, and of course Hollywood has capitalized on that for probably more than 100 years. Um, the, the, these visions that Daniel has can be ones that fill someone with horror, with, with great fear. You hear about these strange beasts. It's like this lion and gets has these wings and they get plucked out and this thing with uh, with ten horns and then a little horn sprouts up and three other horns fall away to make room for you. All this crazy stuff, crazy, crazy vision. Things that uh, should um, or it would not be surprising that 
they would inspire fear, that you would be afraid of these things. But Daniel, I think in this vision, and as it's given to him, and as he relates it, does not want us to be focusing so much on this. Now, of course, many theologians, scripture scholars, have speculated on what all this means and what the symbolism of all of that is. And I don't want to get into all of that detail right now. What I really want to say is that, is that we're looking at these end times, and there are times that are going to be fearful, that are going to inspire fear. And unfortunately, that's, that's going to happen because we will see all of these horrific things happen, all these horrific things. And what we have to remember, though, is that however horrible it seems, the Lord is still Lord. He's still God. And he will remain. All those things will be destroyed. And we won't have to worry about them anymore. We don't have to worry about that kind of fear anymore. The Lord will be with us and will establish order and his kingdom will come in its completeness. And then we'll live in this world of complete justice, or if not in this world, in the world to come. I say, I say this world because, of course, the kingdom is not just sort of a one-time event and something that's just reserved to the end times, though it is a big end time theme, and seeing as we're at the last uh, week of ordinary time, the last week of the church year, by the way, that's the last time you'll see the green vestment until next year. Um, there, as we, as we focus on you know, these, this end of the church here, we focus on these end times, these end time themes and what that's going to be like. But again, the kingdom is with us now, though not complete. But that completeness will come, and it's assured uh, for us. Jesus is telling us in the gospel, in this gospel parable, to be ready for that kingdom. He uh, talks about trees and buds uh, bursting forth, and we know that summer is coming. I guess it's a word of encouragement for us now since we've had some cold weather recently and we know that, that winter is coming. But uh, we, should, we should watch the times and know that the Lord is indeed coming and it is going to happen. And there will be signs of his coming. We won't know exactly when it's going to happen, but there will be signs, signs of the kingdom. We will experience goodness. We will see good things happen. And those would, should give us encouragement in, the, in this time to uh, persevere, persevere through whatever difficulty and be ready when the Lord calls us, whether that's individually or he returns in glory to collect us all. He gives us again some words of encouragement, which I think um, we should remember. And it's an interesting thing because there is uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, mass parts that the uh, Hispanic Coro sings, inserts these lines in it, which um, uh, I always thought it seemed to be kind of a strange thing, but it does bring about you know, a reminder of the kingdom and the reminder that the Lord is, is coming, that heaven and earth will pass away, but the Lord's words will not pass away. So the word is going to stay with us, and the word is Jesus. We have his abiding presence with us now, certainly in the Blessed Sacrament and the Tabernacle, but wherever, wherever people gather in his name, he is there. He is there with them. It should be for us um, a great encouragement, particularly in times that look kind of bleak or that look uh, frightening. It's a time, uh, you know, within the Eucharist, it's the, I think the most beautiful time because we get to encounter the Lord so intimately. We get to be reminded that he is with us and wants to travel with us by allowing us to take him in under the form of bread that is his body. So, as we wrap up the church year, as we uh, get ready for uh, the new church year and for the Advent season to begin, 
um, we ask the Lord to help us to accept more deeply his presence with us, to ask for his guidance, to ask him to help us to not be fearing the end, but that we should be ready for it and to trust in his goodness and the mercy of his judgment. So let's pray. We pray first uh, special prayers for Liam, Tiffany, and Christopher, and also for Candace Matelski Brady. We pray to the Lord. We uh, offer prayers for healing and comfort for Christy, uh, Carolyn Wensell, and her grandchildren, Stu Harper, Susan Harrelson, Nathan, uh, Kathy Metcalf, uh, Joey Zima, Melissa, Tony Day, Woody and Elaine Gales, Mr. and Mrs. Ingle, Kate Kopic, Sophia Mordini, Kitty Spurrier, um, for the senior members of the Obachowski family, for uh, Bishop Peter Jugas, for Marie, for Trevor Redmond, Marita Mouton, William Lamine, and Madison Plasencia, Plasencia. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in Ukraine and in the Holy Land and in all areas of the world that nations of the world will respond generously to the needs of those who are suffering because of war. We pray to the Lord. Uh, any other prayers you'd like to offer? Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, assures us that you will continue to speak loving words to humankind, especially through the worst of circumstances. May the kingdom continue to come nearer as we strive to live and share your love with others. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, grant us unfailing obedience to your commands. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Joan of Arc and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every... Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.